This is Tri-County Spin, a public affairs presentation of WHIG-TV. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of WHIG-TV or its sponsors. Now, here are your hosts for today's edition of Tri-County Spin. And good afternoon. You are watching another edition of Tri-County Spin. They haven't yanked us off the air yet. They haven't. No, no, not yet. The FCC has not come and raided the, our headquarters here. So not we've got, yet. We've got another hour. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Crescione is going to be here later. I guess he might be their first target. But <laughs> we, we need He's to coming at 730 tonight. <laughs> don't forget American Danger. All right. So it is the ninth day of April. And it we is. are joined here today by Mr. Paul Coble. How are you? We are doing just fine. How Glad are you? Glad to have you tonight. Thank you. It's good to be here. Glad to have you. He yeah. is uh, running for the Republican nomination for the congressional seat, the thir 13th congressional seat out of North Carolina. That's Obviously correct. Obviously not Virginia because that would make no sense to be on this show, but you never know. Okay, so Mr. Coble, <laughs> tell us about yourself. Well, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. This is fun. Uh, I grew up in Raleigh and uh, went to public schools in Raleigh. Uh, ended up going to Wake Forest and graduating from Wake Forest University with a business degree and came back and went into the insurance business and I've had my own insurance business for 31 years uh, in Wake County. Uh, I've signed both sides of a paycheck. I work with small businesses and help them plan. Interestingly enough, a major part of my business is health care. So I'm getting a real up close and personal look at Obamacare uh, from an angle most people don't get right. to see it from. Uh, and so in addition to being a businessman for 31 years, uh, I've also served on the Raleigh City Council for three terms. I was mayor of Raleigh. I'm now in my second term as a county commissioner and I'm in my second term as chairman of the, of the Wake County Commission. So. Uh, I bring to the table a mixture of experience both in the private sector uh, and in the public sector. And uh, I've married for 35 years, just celebrated my uh, wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. We're excited about that. And I have my first grandchild due in less than two weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations yeah. again. You yeah. two yeah. have something in common. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're real excited. We're on baby watch, and, and we're waiting for uh, the first grandchild to show up. So we're just real excited about That's that. That's fun. You can always give the grandchildren back. Don't forget that. That's right. <laughs> I always hand them back. That's right. I understand that having grandchildren <laughs> is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and that the only way to get there is to have children, but that you enjoy <laughs> grandchildren. Uh, so much more. So I'm looking forward to that experience. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Have a wonderful time. Um, Paul, I want to ask you, you're from Raleigh. Um, I want to talk about the district a little sure. bit because I think people have the impression that you have the meat of Raleigh and, and that's really not true. So can we talk about that a little bit, what the sure. district involves? Sure. And I think we've got a map. I don't know if we'll be able to put that up yet, but uh, the district involves... Uh, there we go. The perfect. As you can see, if you look at the dark gray areas, uh, a good portion of Wake County, but not including the interior part of Raleigh or Cary. Uh, it's got a small part of Granville County, a small part of uh, Franklin County, and a very small part of Vance County. Uh, and then if, if you come around, uh, you can see that you've got uh, the western part of Nash County up to Rocky Mount, the western part of Wilson County, and then uh, quite a big part of the northern and western part of Wayne County. And what, you know what's really remarkable about that is if you look at Wake County to your concern, uh, a lot of that area is comprised of small towns. Right. And just like in all the other counties, it's largely, this district is going to be made up of small towns, not one big dominant city. A lot of people think Raleigh is going to dominate the district. And I don't think that's really true. You'll have some of Raleigh, but you'll largely have the other small towns. Uh, and I know that people are concerned about uh, Raleigh dominating because they think as goes Raleigh, there everything right, else will follow. Exactly. And that whoever's elected from Raleigh is going to ignore the rest of the district. Well, that's just not true, at least not for me. Uh, I understand the, the importance of small towns. Uh, I have spent the last six years uh, on the Wake County Commission making sure that the small towns in Wake County uh, were heard and, and were represented on the right. Wake County Commission. That's important. That's where a lot of the population is. And I think that's going to be true when we look at 
Nash County, uh, whether we're talking about Momar, or we're talking about right. Nashville or, or Spring Hope, or whether we're talking about Pike Bull down in Wayne County, right. you know, those will all be very important. I think the advantage is going to be that the individual who represents the 13th Congressional District will represent the whole district. And as goes the importance of Wake County, I think Wayne, Nash, and Wilson will see that they move right along with that and that their interests are well served by being together in this district. Uh, instead of being off to the east, I think they will have an important role to play uh, in the district. Uh, I certainly think it's important. I know that you mentioned that uh, Walter Jones has always paid a lot of attention to Rocky Mount. Absolutely. And that uh, Renee Elmers, uh, I will tell you that uh, I understand the importance of uh, uh, being here, and what's important about Rocky Mount, and I have every intention of serving every part of the uh, district. Well, that's good to hear, Paul. I'm so glad to hear you say that. You know, the national census figures have just come out, and Fayetteville is growing, and military, we understand mm -hmm. why, because of the military. Raleigh is growing, and Rocky Mount just isn't um, thriving right now, and growing right now, and we're shrinking. And we're going to need good congressional leadership. Mm -hmm. We really are. So um, do you think you could? Well, there's no question uh, that we can bring leadership. But remember one thing, government doesn't create jobs. You're right. Uh, small businesses create jobs. I've spent 31 years working with small businesses. They're the engine of the economy. What we need to do is to make sure that the government's not getting in the way of small business. And I mean, when I say that, I'm talking from the lowest level all the way up to Congress. We need to be reducing bureaucracy and regulation in order to help small business. Uh, back in the early 90s, the chamber in Raleigh did a study, and it said there are really three things that are important for a community, for an area to really uh, move forward. And those are uh, low taxes, good schools, uh, and public safety, because somebody will move to a community. They'll bring their business, they'll, they'll mm -hmm. bring employees to an area if they know it's going to be a, a reasonable place to live, it's going to be affordable. They know that their children will get a good education, uh, and then also they know that they're going to be safe uh, in their homes and, right. in, and in their workplaces. Uh, if you've got those three things and you're really focusing on that, you're ready to move forward uh, as a community. Uh, and then it's just a matter of helping those businesses and not being a hindrance to those businesses. I'm glad you said that because that was on my list to talk about all the regulations on yeah. small business. So it, glad you addressed that. It, it's amazing. In the last, uh, with this administration, with the Obama administration, uh, they've actually created over 10,000 new regulations that are going to cost $48 billion to implement. Uh, to, to, it will be a burden on the small tax, uh, on the small business people. It's going to cost another 11 billion to put those regulations into place. To give you an example of the size of that, the Bush administration's regulations on business amounted to eight billion dollars. Well, that's a big difference. Eight billion is too much. Uh, truth matter is, we have too many regulations. Oh yeah, and absolutely. I'll bet, I'll, I've got enough experience to know I can probably tell you there are too many regulations even in Rocky Mount on mm -hmm. business. Our business is struggling right. even locally to get going. And that's the thing you've got to look at is you cannot continue to be a hindrance on business and then wonder, well, why aren't there any businesses coming? Exactly. Well, if you make it hard on them to come, they're not going to come. They'll just go somewhere else. You're exactly right. Let's talk about the deficit. Well, we're, we're in our fourth year of President Obama's deficit program. I mean, every year he brings forward a trillion plus uh, debt uh, deficit in his budget uh, to the point that now we're at a 15 plus trillion dollar debt. And they say we're going to go to 26 trillion in the next 10 years if we don't do something about it. Well, let me tell you, it's not going to be 10 years. It's going to be less than that when we hit that number. If we don't do something about the spending right now, we have got to get control of the spending. And I think there's some, there's some real good plans out there right now. I know that the House has passed the Ryan Plan. Uh, and actually, I think as good as the Ryan Plan is, I think the Republican Review Committee actually had a, a plan that was actually a little bit better. They, they set spending at 2008 levels. And so they would then 
we go back to 2008 levels, you would sit at 2008 until we could get control of the spending and bring everything back uh, into a balanced budget. Uh, did they cut everything? No. Uh, what, that, what that plan says is, is that we cut entitlement programs, uh, we, we cut uh, a number of other programs that are in there, but we don't cut military uh, because we've got to have a strong defense. They right. make some distinction in what are good programs and what are bad programs. You can't go in and just say, I'm going to cut everything. Because when you cut everything, what you do is you cut some good programs along with some That's bad exactly programs. That's exactly right. You've got, you've got to decide what's good and what's worth keeping. Uh, then go in and take out the bad programs. Bad programs don't ex shouldn't exist at all. They should be eliminated. They shouldn't just get cut like everybody else does. They continue to exist, and they're still a bad program. Right. We've got to go in, and you've got to find the programs that aren't working and get rid of them keep the programs that are working and make sure that, that you make them responsive to the people they're supposed to be serving. Very good. Okay, we're going to take a break on the Tri-County Spin Show. We'll be right back with Paul Coble, 13th District, U.S. Congress. Tri-County Spin presented by Don's Body Shop and Collision Center, your one-stop repair shop. Life is about making memories. From our family to yours, Bailey's Fine Jewelry will help you mark all those special occasions with a gift that will last forever. From pearls to diamonds, Bailey's guarantees you will have the best jewelry experience possible. Our jewelry designers are here to assist you with all your custom design work. We work with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. For any occasion, Bailey's is sure to have that special gift for that someone special. Nothing shows you care more than a Bailey box. Life's full of unforgettable moments. Spend a moment in your Pandora store and experience the new collections. You've seen them. Now, make your move for zero down leases at Davenport Buick GMC. Don't make another payment on your old car. Make your move. Experience Buick's new lease on luxury. Lease the new Verano, $339 a month. Regal Turbo, $369. LaCrosse, $399 a month. All 24 month leases with two years on star, two years Sirius XM radio. All maintenance included. Don't wait. Make your move now at Davenport Buick GMC. Conveniently located just off routes 95 and 64 in Rocky Mount. And welcome back to the Don's Body Shop Tri-County Spin Show, also brought to you in part by Bailey's Fine Jewelry and Davenport Auto Park. I want to thank all three of those fine sponsors for bringing you this program tonight. Let's go back, Paul, and talk about, and in case you just tuned in, we have Paul Coble. Mm -hmm. He is running for U.S. Congress District 13, in case you just tuned in. so, And we're going to have some calls later in the show, so um, feel free to listen up and then get your calls ready. So let's go back to the budget. Okay. Talk a little bit more about that. Well, it's it's an interesting subject, and I would say in this race, I'm the only person who actually has real life experience with dealing with budgets, both in the private sector, but also in the public sector. You know, in the last three or four years, we've dealt with a recession uh, at Wake County, and that's been very difficult. But what we did was, we've cut our budget every single year. We had almost a billion dollars, nine hundred and. 70 some thousand dollars of budget and we started cutting as soon as we saw the recession coming and started seeing a downturn in our tax collection both property tax and sales tax so we started cutting we literally cut and forced cuts in our departments all along because the worst thing that you could do in a recession was to raise taxes raise home. taxes and, yeah, and so, exactly so we have cut the budget every year for three years uh, and not had a tax increase and this year, we've actually ended up with a $5 million surplus. Now, $5 million on a $950 million budget is not a lot of money. But I will tell you, it's $5 million more than most counties have. Right. Uh, we're actually in the black. Mm. 
The other thing that we've done is, is that if the state or federal government has given us money for a program, we only take those programs that we know we can, we can use the money and do well with. We never use it to balance the budget like a lot of governments have done. Uh, we never use the money to balance our budget. We use it to run a program. And if the state or federal government decided they didn't want to give us any more money, we cut that program back out. Uh, we were very careful about how we budgeted our, our money. Uh, and at the same time, we've managed to build a new courthouse. We've managed to build a new jail. Uh, and we have funded the school system at the same level that we've funded in the last couple of years. And most counties have cut that budget. Um, but we've managed to hold the funding level. And it's simply through prioritizing your, your spending, uh, which is what we've got to do in Congress. And that's my point, is that uh, Congress is going to have to find a way to make those decisions to prioritize spending. We can't fund every program right. that everybody mm -hmm. wants. You know what? Government can't solve everybody's problems. That's exactly right. You're we exactly need a more right. limited government, a government that gets out of the way of business and allows individuals and businesses to move forward in this Amen. economy. And if they do that, the economy will come back. But as long as we have a president who thinks that government can, can solve the problems and that government can create jobs and that government ought to, to own businesses, we're going to have a problem. That's exactly right. You're right. Paul, we have the... La uh, largest corporate tax rate in the world. That's right. What are we going to do? Well, that, that's terrible. I, th I think we need to unleash the power of business. And, and the way you do that is you cut taxes. I think what we do is we go in, we take the corporate tax rate, and we take it down. And we don't take it down like they've been talking about 26, 28, 29 percent. You take it down below 20 cut out all the loopholes, cut out all the special deals, just say here is a rate that you're going to pay. Now, you make business decisions based on what that is. We make some of the worst mistakes by, by giving people incentives to make investments based on what their tax rate is going to be, not what's good for their business. If we, if we encourage them to make decisions that are good for their business, then they'll pay the taxes on it but they'll, they'll reinvest money. We've got a lot of money sitting offshore in businesses who don't want to bring it back because of the tax rate you talk about. If we could drop that tax rate, that money would come back into our economy, and I think you would see businesses boom. They would start reinvesting well, I in think the you're economy. exactly right. But Absolutely. you've got to get it low enough that they, that they realize that it's, it's worth coming back. Get rid of all the loopholes. Get rid of all the special tax breaks. Let them make a business decision based on a 18, 19 percent tax rate. You know what? They'll do what's best for their business. And when they do what's best for the business, that's what will be best for America. Well, the Second Amendment is apparently uh, important to you. Mm -hmm. It's all over your website. <laughs> I've checked your nice website. So go to Paul, Paul Coble for Congress. Is thank that you. It? That's it. Paul Coble for Congress check that out, but I do see that you talk about the Second Amendment. I believe in that, and uh, I believe that everybody has a right to uh, bear arms, uh, and I think that's extremely important. I believe in the concealed carry permit uh, process, and I think that's uh, good for America. Well, the Castle Doctrine has been statewide, local. I think Buck Newton um, introduced that bill, but mm -hmm. the Castle Doctrine has been um, passed here, so that in in North Carolina, so I think that's wonderful. I, I think I do too. You know, there are a lot of different people who have uh, guns for a lot of different reasons, and, and a lot of them are good. You know, you can have have them for hunting, uh, you can have them for self protection, uh, you can have them for whatever reason. But I think that's our God given right to have our guns, uh, and I certainly will defend that in Congress. Very good. Well, the Democrats claim that oil mm. companies get a subsidy, when indeed it's just a tax break, isn't that it's, right? a, it's the same tax break that everybody else gets. Uh, if you listen to uh, the Democrats, you would think we were uh, giving it all away. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, our problem in this country is not, uh, once again, beating up on businesses. Uh, what we need to do is 
tell those guys, look, here's your, here's your tax rate, now go make money. Uh, and, and you make it dependable. The problem right now that we're having is, is that regulation and bureaucracy leads to uncertainty. And if, if businessmen are uncertain about the future, you know, because of Dodd-Frank, because of Obamacare, because of future regulations they see coming, they're not going to hire people and invest. They're going to sit and wait to see what happens. And so you don't get investment. Uh, what we need to be doing right now, I am firmly believe that we need to be drilling. We need to be looking for oil. We need to be building refineries. We've got right. three of our major refineries offline right now as they prepare to make the summer blend gasoline that meets all the federal standards. And so people wonder why there's not a, uh, enough fuel right now. It's because all these refineries have to do repairs and they have to get ready for the summer uh, fuel uh, program, and that takes production away. When you don't have production, what happens? Price of gasoline goes up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we need, I, I promise you, if we announced that we were going to start uh, building the Keystone Pipeline and that we were going to drill in Anwar and that we were going to drill offshore from North Carolina along the coast and we went back and gave permits to those people who had drilling rights in the Gulf, as soon as we did that we would see the price of oil start coming down. And I know a lot of people have said that's not true, especially this president. But I can promise you if you turn it loose and let those people start drilling, we can find oil, and what better way when people say, well, we got to get off of, the, of foreign oil. Can't get off of foreign oil until you have domestic oil. That's exactly right. You know, I have not seen the first super tanker yet to come into a harbor in North Carolina that was powered by solar panels or a big wind turbine. Right. They're fueled by, uh, by uh, oil, uh, and we need oil if we're going to have commerce. Same way with trucks. I haven't seen a single freight liner going down 64 being uh, powered by solar panels. This economy runs on oil, and it will for a long time. We need to have oil for this country to continue to have the economic advantages that it has. Four dollars a gallon. <laughs> Who Four dollars. A buck 84 when, when Bush was in office, and here we are at four dollars. Who would have believed it? other than the President of the United States who told us up front what he was going to do and that was he wanted to see us slowly raise the price of gasoline until we matched what was in Europe and that's exactly what he's that's done. That's exactly what he's done. Absolutely. Well we've done it. We are there. Right Cameron? Well about halfway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's pretty expensive. My, yeah. my, my in-laws are, are English. I, I hear a lot about Oh yeah. yeah. I do the conversion. It's, it's getting there. It's about eight dollars a gallon over there. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's pretty bad. That will, that, will, that will hurt the economy worse than anything. Look at all the talk about the recovery, which I haven't seen yet. I'll just go ahead and tell you. All the talk in newspapers about the, the recovery, it is weak at best. But the thing that is going to absolutely hurt the recovery is if gasoline stays up at the prices that it is now and goes over four and keeps going up. That will stifle this economy. Yes, it will. Okay, well, it's break time again. Uh, we're going to take our almost 7 o'clock break, and we'll be right back on the Don's Body Shop Tri-County Spin Show right after this. Tri-County Spin presented by Don's Body Shop and Collision Center, your one-stop repair shop. Life is about making memories. From our family to yours, Bailey's Fine Jewelry will help you mark all those special occasions with a gift that will last forever. From pearls to diamonds, Bailey's guarantees you will have the best jewelry experience possible. Our jewelry designers are here to assist you with all your custom design work. We work with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. For any occasion, Bailey's is sure to have that special gift for that someone special. Nothing shows you care more than a Bailey box. Life's full of unforgettable moments. Spend a moment in your Pandora store 
and experience the new collections. You've seen them. Now make your move for zero down leases at Davenport Buick GMC. Don't make another payment on your old car. Make your move. Experience Buick's new lease on luxury. Lease the new Verano, $339 a month. Regal Turbo, $369. LaCrosse, $399 a month. All 24 month leases with two years on star, two years Sirius XM radio. All maintenance included. Don't wait. Make your move now at Davenport Buick GMC. Conveniently located just off routes 95 and 64 in Rocky Mount. And yeah, we're back. back, right? The night we yes, were talking we about where I met my wife, and I made the comment that when I met her, she wasn't in fact my wife then. So I met my wife uh, in, in Las Vegas when we got married. <laughs> so I first met her as my wife. But anyway, right. we are back with Paul Coble. He <laughs> is running for Congress, obviously out of North Carolina, in the 13th Congressional District, which does encompass a significant chunk of Nash County. Yes, it does. And like you said, a lot of people are kind of worried that, you know, because some of the district is wake and some of that district hits Raleigh that you're going to do some, some electoral math. You see a lot of votes in Raleigh, not as much over here, so I can win Raleigh, but that isn't the case. That's not as the case. There's just about, I'm, I'm looking at the map, it looks like there's as much at least land mass. Let's go back over it again because there could be some people that have just tuned in, if you don't mind. Let's go sure. back over that again for your concerns. So, um, Trey, yeah. if you'll put that map back there up. You thank you. Well, the uh, Wake County uh, is, a, is a big part of the, of the district, but if you look, Raleigh and Cary, the western part of the county, are not in the district. Then if you look up to the north, you see that you've got a small part of Granville, small part of Vance, and some of Franklin County. Then you've got the western part of Nash County right up to Rocky Mount with some of Rocky Mount in it. You've got the western part of Wilson County with uh, some of Wilson in it, and then you've got a large chunk of Wayne County, the northern part of Wayne County and the western part of Wayne County, not including Goldsboro and Mount Olive, but a lot of small towns uh, in that area and a lot of important towns. And I see my job as, as a uh, member of Congress serving everybody in a district. Right. And, and all, the, all the towns, everybody is equally important. And that's going to be a real test. Um, for, for whoever serves, but it's this is actually a good district because if you look at it, it's easy to get anywhere in 40 to 45 mm -hmm. minutes. You really can get everywhere pretty quickly, uh, and I think that'll be great. Um, I, I see it as a, as a wonderful opportunity. One of the other things is is that uh, this district has a lot of rural area in it, a lot of agribusiness, and agribusiness is very important. Uh, and we need to, to recognize that and make sure that those interests are also represented because that's where a, a lot of your tax base is. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Trey, for showing us that map and I hope you understand now that, um, well, you've seen the area, District 13, and understand that um, Paul Coble says that he is committed to Nash County, uh, to the residents of Nash County. So. I want to talk a little bit about education. Okay. Um, do you feel like states should run their own education system? Do you feel like the federal government should not get involved with state education? Well, I'll tell you, the first thing we ought to do is get rid of the Department of Education. We don't need it. Uh, the states should be in charge of education. The, the more you can push education down to the local level, the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I, I don't know about that. I mean, since the Department of Education has been created, we've been thrust into the forefront of the world in terms of educational outcomes, haven't we? <laughs> if, no? If you're happy with the outcome, forget <laughs> it. <you know? laughs> I'm not sure I'm all that happy. We're, we're not it. setting the world on fire in math and science. That's shocking, course. isn't it? Oh. <laughs> well, what is the ad the IBM runs right now that, uh, that we're 25th? Uh, right. and, and that's a shame. And, and I think some of that is, is that we're not giving uh, educators on the local level the tools and the opportunity to do what's best for our children. We are so busy trying to deal on a national level that we're not getting the opportunities of, of uh, a state taking a particular uh, opportunity and trying something new, being an incubator for a new idea. If it works, great. Other states can follow, but if it doesn't, those states don't have to. You know, what's in necessarily important? Math and science are important. Uh, English is important. But there's some things in North Carolina that might be more important than, say, in Iowa or California. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
North Carolina needs to be able to focus on those things that are important for North Carolina's right. young people. Uh, and we can fashion our education program to, to match that. You know, I, as chairman of the county commission, one of the issues that I have to deal with is the Wake County school system, which oh, is yeah. one of the biggest in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and we fund a good portion of that. And we are, we're constantly having conversations about, you know, what do you do to make the program better? And how do you make the program better? And is spending, is, is the whole answer spending money? You know, is throwing money at a problem the answer? And it's not. Uh, we've got really fine schools in Wake County. That doesn't necessarily mean those kids are learning math and science like right. they're supposed to. It's about the teacher. And let me tell you, my mother was a teacher. My daughter is a teacher. I understand what teachers do and that they are very important for us. Uh, we need to make sure teachers have the opportunity to teach. Right. Sometimes we're so busy asking teachers to be social guidance counselors and psychiatrists and psychologists and everything else. And dare we say parents? And parents <laughs> to parent when the parents won't do their job. We're asking them to do so many things. I Sometimes I wonder how they have time to teach. I know. And, and so right. I, I, I think my answer is, you know, yeah, let's get rid of the Department of Education. Okay. Can we take this call? I think this lady has been trying to get through for quite some time. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this is very interesting, and I, I can see from what is being said, with which most of which I'm very much in accord, I can see that Mr. Cole is a upholder of the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, which is certainly extremely important and extremely under attack. I want to jump back, if I may, and ask him to comment on uh, uh, the gun control issue. I am, of course, very much in favor of the right to keep and bear arms, and uh, that is enshrined in our Constitution, of course, as you have stated. But I wonder if you would comment on the Small Arms Treaty, which is being pushed very hard now by President Obama, and whom I call the... Uh, co-president Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State. Uh, they're pushing it very hard, uh, and of course, if, if it gets to the point where they are able to pass it, I hope they not to get it passed, of course. I hope it never will. But if they can get it passed, then uh, if you have local gun control, and you have, ultimately, that would be national gun control in the U.S., right. and then international gun control, you've got a pincher movement where the uh, the local and the international will squeeze out and it's not just in our nation it seems to me it's in all nations they're working to disarm the people and i would i just would like very much to hear your comments on that because it's something of the formula that the u.n uses for just about everything and i am not an advocate of the u.n i'd like to see us out of that but would you please comment on that i think it, it's a very major subject. Yes ma'am and I, I think you articulated that very well uh, because you're absolutely correct. Um, what the liberals would like to do is put us in a situation where uh, the international uh, community is making decisions for the citizens of the United States of America and that is wrong. Uh, we are supposed to live under our constitution and our rights. Uh, but so often we see this administration and some past administrations who want to hand off responsibility to the UN. Uh, and you're right, it does put it in a pincher like uh, movement because uh, I'm afraid we're going to start seeing some of our judges making decisions on, on gun laws and, and other important uh, rulings uh, that are going to be based on international law, not on our laws. And that's a real concern. And I can tell you in Congress, I would vote against that every time, and I would oppose anything uh, that is driven by the by UN decisions and, and international law because those are not the laws we live under. And and that brings up a topic, uh, Agenda 21. Uh, a, you know that is there again the UN trying to tell people in this country how we should live. And it is, a, it is a choice that they're trying to force us into where they move us towards collectivism and away from personal property rights. Well, I'm a big believer in personal property rights, and I am a, an opponent of Agenda 21. And I'll tell you if, you, if you're watching this show and you watch your local city council and you watch your county commissioners, you need to start watching for words like sustainability and, and uh, 
green anything uh, and smart growth because those are all key terms that are used to push this Agenda 21. Now I'm, I've been told that it doesn't really exist. You know, I brought forward a resolution at the County Commission where we came out against the tw uh, Agenda 21 and my Democrat friends on the board said that Paul you're complaining about something that doesn't exist. And I said well if it doesn't exist Explain to me why the city of Raleigh pays dues and belongs to the program that the UN set up. Explain to me why there are 41 counties in this country that have withdrawn from the program. It's known as ICLE, uh, and it's an acronym. Why they've withdrawn from it and quit paying dues. Why would you withdraw from a program that doesn't exist? And why would the state of Tennessee and the state of Texas pass resolutions in their legislatures against something that doesn't exist? Fine. It's real. It exists, and it's just like this gun law. They are trying to step in and take our rights away from us, and we have to be ever vigilant to make sure that doesn't happen. Does that answer your question? Oh, very well indeed. I, I really en enjoyed the answer, and I certainly am in accord with it. I think that underlying all of this is a continuous assault on the Constitution of the United States because if the Constitution is either changed or uh, just eliminated by fiat, just simply ignoring it is what they're doing, they're just ignoring it, then uh, we have lost our sovereignty and we have lost those protections. If the Constitution is not sovereign, then we are launched into this world situation with the UN and the Council of Wise Men telling us everything to do. So I certainly do appreciate it and I think it was a a very fine answer. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, I, I'm one of those who does not believe that the Constitution is a living document that can be changed as uh, the generations of Americans change. It is, it is a document that was written for us to live by, and uh, we have to be very careful how we, how we change or modify it. Uh, we have a system of, of uh, checks and balances in this country to make sure uh, that we live by the Constitution. Unfortunately, we have a current administration that seems to, to uh, want to change it, but they don't want to change it legally. They want to change it by fiat. That's right. There's no question about that. Yep. That's what they want to do. Well, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank Bye. you for calling. Okay, we do invite your calls. 407-1111 is the number. And uh, Paul Coble is our guest tonight, U.S. Uh, Congress District 13. So let's talk a little bit about the military. Should okay. we have just pulled the troops out? That is so frightening to me. Uh, I'm old enough to remember the end of the Vietnam War and the, and the pictures from uh, the, the troops pulling out at the last minute and people who were put in danger and our allies Absolutely. who were wiped out because we left the way we did. And, and that has been a stain that has been with this country for a long time. I'm equally concerned about a, a administration who will announce in a future date that we're going to leave at a certain time. Uh, and I'm talking about Afghanistan in this situation because I think what that does is it takes the, the opportunity away from the military to make in, uh, decisions that are important on the ground that sure. need to be made. Sure, it does. I think it tells the enemy, if you will just sit back and wait and not do anything, when we leave, then you can go ahead and do whatever you want to. Uh, and I think we put our troops in danger. I and, think so, absolutely. And I'm, I'm very concerned about that. Um, we, we have a volunteer army, and those people go over, and they fight for us, and they fight for our rights, and they fight for our freedom, and too often we forget that. Uh, and, then, and then we let politicians put them in harm's way. Uh, and and that's wrong. We need to when we decide to go to war. We need to have a mission. We need to have a mission statement. We need to decide what it is we're going for. If we don't if we don't have a clear mission, uh, then we don't need to be going to war. Uh, we're making a mistake if that's the case. We need to know why we're going, what we're going to accomplish, and then when we've accomplished it, we need to come home. But we need to come home when we've won and accomplished right. the mission. Somebody said one time, you never have the closing ceremony in your own capital. You have it in the capital of, the, of those that you defeated. Uh, we should not put the lives of our citizens on the line if we don't know what we're trying to accomplish. And I, and I feel like 
uh, unfortunately, we went into Afghanistan knowing what we wanted to do, but we have lost focus on that lost mission. Lost sight of it. There's yep. no doubt about it. Okay. Well, we're going to do a wrap-up with Paul Coble, U.S. District 13, U.S. Congress District 13, right after this. Tri-County Spin presented by Don's Body Shop and Collision Center, your one-stop repair shop. Life is about making memories. From our family to yours, Bailey's Fine Jewelry will help you mark all those special occasions with a gift that will last forever. From pearls to diamonds, Bailey's guarantees you will have the best jewelry experience possible. Our jewelry designers are here to assist you with all your custom design work. We work with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. For any occasion, Bailey's is sure to have that special gift for that someone special. Nothing shows you care more than a Bailey box. Life's full of unforgettable moments. Spend a moment in your Pandora store and experience the new collections. You've seen them. Now, make your move for zero down leases at Davenport Buick GMC. Don't make another payment on your old car. Make your move. Experience Buick's new lease on luxury. Lease the new Verano, $339 a month. Regal Turbo, $369. LaCrosse, $399 a month. All 24-month leases with two years OnStar, two years Sirius XM Radio. All maintenance included. Don't wait. Make your move now at Davenport Buick GMC. Conveniently located just off routes 95 and 64 in Rocky Mount. We're back. We are back on the Tri-County Spin Show this Monday evening. Um, this is live, and Don's Body Shop is our major sponsor. And want to also thank Bailey's Fine Jewelry and Davenport Auto Park for their fine sponsorship of this program. I never did ask you, Paul, why are you running? That's a great question. Um, you know, when I first got involved in politics, it was because I had as I said, a business that I was concerned about how I was going to survive with the regulations of local business that were hitting me hard. Uh, and I had two small daughters. Uh, I needed to be a success in business. And I, and I wanted them to have a city, uh, county that they could grow up in and they could have the same advantages that I had. And fortunately, over the years, they've both grown up. They've done exactly what I hoped they would do. They went off to college and they moved back uh, and have settled in, in the uh, community. And you would think that would be enough. Uh, but now it's dawned on me with a grandchild on the way that we haven't done everything we need to do. And there are other generations that we have to take care of. And so I'm running because I want future generations that have the same opportunity that we've had, uh, that we can live where we want to live, that we have an opportunity to participate in, in the world's greatest economy. Uh, that we know we're safe wherever we go and that we have um, freedom, both religious freedom and economic freedom uh, and those things are important to me and I have, I've always fought for those, I've always fought for the rights of the, of the personal uh, property owner, personal property rights and that's something that's just been important to me and, and I've got an opportunity uh, where I'm situated in life that I can do this and I'm willing to go up there and fight. You know, I'm going to Washington to fight. I'm not going up there to join the club. I want to go up there and fight for change because if we don't change it this time, we are going to lose the opportunity to ever change it in the future. 2012 is the most important election uh, that any of us have faced in a very, very long time. You're exactly right. And, and you know, we said that last election. But that. now, <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> this time, I, I think you're exactly right. It's it's become increasingly more important. Well, I heard a great uh, analogy the other day, um, and that is is that the United States is is just like a car, a really nice car, and unfortunately, for the last several years, the Democrats have been driving that car about 100 miles an hour towards a cliff, uh, and we're going over that cliff real soon if we don't do something. Unfortunately, there have been a lot of Republicans in the back seat telling them to slow down, 
75 miles an hour is fine. Right. Well, even at 75 miles an hour, we're going over the cliff. We're just going over a little bit later than we would with the Democrats driving. We need people in Washington who are willing to say, you know what? We need to slow down, stop, turn the car around, and go in an opposite direction. Will it be easy? No. We're going to make some hard choices in this country, and they will not be pleasant. But if we don't make those hard choices now, we will never be able to make those choices. Those choices will be made for us, and we will suffer economic consequences that we do not want to face. It's scary. It's really scary. It is. It's scary for your baby. It's scary for your grandchild. That's exactly right. And that's the reason I'm, I'm fighting. That's the reason I've always fought. The uh, reason I've worked to, to cut budgets, the reason I've cut taxes, the reason I've cut departments uh, in government because we cannot continue to grow at the pace we're growing. Everybody can't work for the government. I know the Obama administration seems to think that that's what we need to do, that they create jobs, but the only jobs they can create are government jobs. And when everybody works for the government, nobody's making money to support the government. And you can't do that. You're exactly right. Well, if you want to ask for everybody's vote. I will sure do it. I so much hope that y'all go out on May the 8th and vote. It's really important. As we said, this is an important election. Uh, I need your vote for Congress in the 13th District. I hope you'll remember me, Paul Coble. Go to my website, Paul Coble for Congress. I certainly need your support. And I want to let you know that I will that I will represent you in Congress and I will have your best interest at heart when I go up there. Well, thank you so much for being with us thank you. tonight. This is thank great. you, Paul. I enjoyed it. Glad to thank have you. you. Doctor? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> and glad to have you watching tonight on the Tri-County Spin Show. Join us Wednesday evening at 8.30.